Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGResearch.com here. So I'm out in the uh, garage. I've got this thing out here because I've been doing some work out here. And while this thing prints some coils, I can get some other stuff done. So real quickly, I just wanted to give you like a quick update. Um, the video that you're watching right now versus the video you're watching last week or whenever I posted that video, we built a custom tool end for this and realized that we needed to completely change it. And the only reason that I posted that entire series was because it gave a lot of extra information and to show that sometimes you can design something and completely fail. That's okay. Try, try again. So in this video, I actually end up drilling a hole in the, well, in this stepper motor I'm going to show you and doing some really fun stuff with it. So let's jump right into that and then we'll come back here towards the end of the video. So. Check it out, see what I did to make the second version of the motorized tool in for wrapping coils. All right, I don't know where this piece of video is going to be starting, so I'll just explain to you what I'm doing. I found this stepper motor, which is very, very large. It's kind of bulky in my stock, but it has a 0.9 degree. It can be connected as bipolar or um, unipolar, depending on how you just configure it out here, which is awesome. And so what I've decided to do is I decided to drill a hole in the shaft. So I have two of these, lucky me, and I've already taken this one apart. There's the front. Here is the uh, the back, and I've already, uh, oh man, yeah, I've already uh, taken the sticker off there. That was probably way out of range, but anyway. So I'll show you what the inside of this one looks like. So the last one we fixed up was a little different. This one actually has pole pieces and then on each pole piece there's a bunch of little teeth that you can see there. And then uh, I'll show you the rotor and get some more visuals there for you. How many poles is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's eight poles and then there on each one of those it appears there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I believe nine nine little teeth on each pole. So I have here the uh, shaft out of there. It's a five millimeter shaft and look at that, I drilled the hole right through that thing. Now I taped it because this part is the magnet. I didn't want all them shavings sticking to it. And I don't like this motor for one reason, because it's a lot of weight. But I do like it because it's got 0.9 steppers, 0.9 steps per uh, revolution as a base and then you can do micro stepping and get it really really down into the really fine stuff there so here she is really nice and clean might try to clean off a little more gunk it was already in there when I had it but this is what it looks like and you can see all the teeth on there it's a really shiny piece I believe that these are just uh, steel pole pieces laminates and then there's a magnet in there it's hard to actually tell you can see it has like an edge plate so I'm not 100% sure. Um, I tried drilling it from this short side, which is the back side, and then I broke my... Um, <laughs> I used a really small center tap, and I broke it off. So I turned it around and ended up drilling it from this side, and this side is pretty well in the center. I'm not perfect, but pretty well in the center. However, this side is not, so I'm kind of glad I drilled it that way, because this is going to be the bottom. Anyway, let's put this back together and go from there. Over. Anyway, so here is the uh, two motors. So as you can see here, this one has a hole down the middle of it, all the way through the shaft. The back is not uh, perfectly centered, as you can see, because that's the side that the drill bit came out on. But the side I really care about, which is the exit, is really nice. So you know what? For drilling that on a little mini mini uh, lathe, I'm completely content. This one's factory still, as you can see. So these uh, guys are obsolete if you look them up, can't find them anymore, but they make a bunch of other products still. Uh, so this is at 12 volt, 0.3 amps per phase, and that is in by, no that's in unipolar. So that's using each phase individually so the resistance is different. So if you put these in bipolar, um, it's like 77 ohms, and so it'll run at 17 volts at 200 milliamps. So I'm running my printer at 24 volt. And that gives me uh, a little bit extra uh, off, but same amount of current, so the current's limited in the controller and the software. So now I gotta make a tool in for this. This will be the next phase, and we'll see how that goes. So, see you in a few. 
All right, here we are. So I've made this uh, little motor mount. Um, it basically is square bottom with a three top with a hole in it and a spacer. This gets me below the uh, this, the point that I need to be below in order for this to work correctly. Um, I was going to mount the motor on the top of the end effector, but then I didn't think I'd have enough shaft. So I decided then I'd mount it on the bottom like this. Now again, this motor is way oversized, but I need the torque. And uh, I'm just going to have to see how it goes and then eventually possibly get a smaller one. This is a NEMA 17. It's quite big. It's not too heavy, but it's still pretty big. Um, so this guy right here, I was going to take the screws out and just put this on the back side like this because the front side with the uh, machined edge has the shaft sticking out. However, I couldn't find a single bolt around here that was long enough to make this work. So I thought, what the heck? So then I thought uh, what I need to do is actually turn this thing around so I can make it go the other way. Kids in the background, can you hear? Anyway, I need to make this go the other way uh, so that the basically so I can mount this on this side where it's machined but have the shaft stick out the back. Um, so in this process I also needed to have a spring lever just like the original uh, unit it's laying around here somewhere. It's got a spring on it so I can put tension on the roller. So I needed the same thing to be done here. Um, and so in order to do that, I thought maybe I could actually build it into the motor itself. Now, if I move this, you can hear it's moving. So this actually does move. So I thought, you know what, what, uh, what if I could actually take out the spacers uh, and then the spring washer that's on the bearing. There's the pieces for it right there. So the spring washer and the two brass bushings. If I could make up that space with a spring, uh, could it work? Now, this is kind of good and kind of bad. It's kind of bad because the teeth are moving away from the poles on the inside of the motor. But it's good because then I don't have to worry about how to build a spring tension onto my roller. I can just clamp it right onto my shaft and the shaft and the motor can be the spring tension. So this is a bit too much spring tension. This is actually the uh, the magnet pulling it back into the center here. So what I've done is I've taken this one apart all right, and I found all the pieces I needed um, to make this work. So I've got this little spring here I've also got a really thin, I uh, can barely even see it on there, a really thin uh, washer. All right, so that goes on this side, that sits against the bearing. And then on this side, we've got the spring. Okay, that's where this goes. And then I've machined down this lip right here because I wanted the bearing to fit below it. Then I, I dabbed a few spots of super glue to keep the bearing in place because these are like slip fit, so they don't get pressed in there, they can fall out and they can move around. So I didn't want them moving. I wanted the inside of the uh, metal here to rub the inside of the metal here, which, yeah, that's kind of a bad idea, but that's what I wanted, so that's what I did. So now, um, I've got that sticking out. This is actually the back now, so now it's reversed of what it used to be. So let's pop this thing together. Okay, I got the other bearing in there. I just glued it in there. Um, put this in here. This, whoever made this motor did a really good job at everything being machine precise. This thing fits in there perfect almost every time. I've taken a lot of stepper motors apart and uh, they definitely don't always fit in there very well. Oh, I got the spring. See the spring? I got it the wrong way. It's sticking out of the top. There we go. Perfect. So it fits together. Look, without the screws, it doesn't rub anything. It's a really good fit. Machining on here is perfect. So now, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but now I can I can push the shaft in. I think you can see it better from the back. See it moving? Now, like I said, the only difference is now the teeth aren't lining up perfectly with the magnet, but honestly, I think that's perfectly okay for what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put a dab of oil uh, between the shaft and the bearing just to keep it free floating in there on some oil. I use this super fine uh, Claw, um, this has actually got grit on it, super fine grit, and smoothed the shaft off the best I could. Now, I've got the machine side on the back, and it fits on there just like that. So now I can use short screws on there, because I couldn't find the... Uh, these are number 440s, I think, and I couldn't find them long enough to go through the other side. So, so be it. We'll do it just like that. So, uh, yeah, that's going to work well. So we'll put this together and uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, fully assembled. Here she looks. Um, so I've got the light on the camera so we can see this. So this thing moves in and out nicely. I actually ended up putting even a different spring on it. It's hard to see. It doesn't need to move much. It only needs to move like 
two millimeter max. It's got about a three or four millimeter play in it, but the harder you push, the more spring you got. The interesting thing is I have to overcome the magnetic force that wants to actually pull it the wrong way. So the spring is actually like twice as strong as I want because the magnet is the other part. Anyway, um, so I've got lubricant on there and what I want to show you is if you look close, see how the lubricant flows on there. So the lubricant is speed cream. I love this stuff. I use it for skateboarding all the time. And I use it for all kinds of stuff. It's just a synthetic oil. But I've, do, I've got the hole sensor on here for my homing switch. Uh, it, most likely I'll fasten this with some sort of 3D printed something or another. And then the magnet will be attached to the actual tool end. Most likely. Oh, uh, fancy. So, uh... I decided to 3D print a little part that holds a little magnet and I glued the uh, hall sensor on the surface of the motor. Um, I taped it with Kapton tape, I'll leave it there, but I did glue it so it should not move. And uh, yeah, that little uh, magnet should swing over the hall sensor and call it home. And then uh, I can move this around where I want it. It's pretty tight, it should never move, but if it does I can just lightly put a dab of super glue on the shaft and uh, should be all right for what I want. So the rest of the tool end can be isolated and I got my homing right on my uh, 360 motor. Cool. All right, here we are on the back side of the printer. Again, the uh, printer, laser, CNC, coil winder, the RWG OSD. Not finished yet, so it looks a little crazy going on here. But um, yeah, this uh, hall sensor that you just saw connected to the top of the motor goes to this little uh, board right here. So the hall sensor used to be right here and I've just removed it and placed it directly where I want it and then take the circuit board and move it somewhere else. I've done this for everything on this guy and it works really well. This is a, uh, I believe you say it's Sane Smart and a little uh, hall sensor in stop switch. I love these little things, they work really well and uh, that's what I'm using for that. And it's just connected right up to the Duet. This is an original 1.0 board. Um, I love this thing to death. It's got a, a touch panel on it. So real quickly, I just wanted to show you that. Now let's uh, go on to what the actual tool end looks like. All right, so here's the first, uh, actually this is like the third tool end I tried to make, it was a fail. Anyway, we'll recycle that. So here's what the tool end looks like. I got a bunch of pieces sitting here and I just want to talk to you about a few things. Um, the first version looked like this. It's black on black. I know it's hard to see, but uh, I tried to put a hole in there. As you can see, there is actually a hole right through the middle of that thing. It's at an angle. It comes out on the front side of the roller. And then this is just a clamp, just like my original uh, original one looked like. I've got a bunch of different bearings here. I'll talk about those in a second. And here is uh, basically the second version that I built that worked really, really well. Um, I've designed this with a 3 millimeter shaft. And then everything I have, I can just switch out different bearings. This one's a different width. This one has a rubber on it. Here I took two small, small bearings and made a little uh, nylon cover for it. And I'll tell you why I did that in a second. Basically, this is the tool end. And uh, it's got a piece of Teflon tube on it. Now, if we look really close on the end here, you can see that I smashed it. Now, I smashed it because I want the wire to actually come out of a very thin slot. So it comes out of a very thin place and holds it in the same spot the whole time. Then the nylon tube goes to the hole in the stepper motor, and I'll show you in a second there's actually a, uh, um, a holder on the very top side that actually holds this tube in the center that's on a bearing. So basically that's the way the tool end looks. The tube goes in through the center, comes out in the front at an angle, and uh, one of the things I've actually had troubles with is the roller. So if we look right here, you can see the play in the roller. See it? That play in the roller is a big problem. Now these are really small bearings and I've had a really hard time finding anything this small that's like a needle bearing or a roller bearing to keep that from uh, happening. So what I actually ended up doing is this little piece is actually two really really small bearings, um, two of these right here, and put them together to try to get rid of some of that slop. And that helped, so actually, what I started doing is taking uh, PTFE um, tape, right, T uh, Teflon tape, and just smashing it between uh, the roller and the edge of, uh, in this case, I got some little washers here. Got them actually wedged in there and trying to hold that roller in place. That's actually working really well, and that's what I've got currently on the, what I have set up. So I like that. But that's what the tool end looks like. And uh, again, just experimenting with different bearings, different types, different styles, and uh, figuring out what works best. So let me show you 
on the machine what it looks like. So I've temporarily got the uh, wires hanging off here, but you can see what the tool end looks like. Got uh, an extra magnet on there now that hits the home sensor. This tool actually have an, has an offset on the roller. So this roller is actually one millimeter offset from the center of the shaft. And I'm doing that because I'm experimenting with all kinds of things. Show and uh, show you that in the next couple of videos. But this works really well. Um, I don't have any Teflon on here. This bearing seems to have a little less play than the rest because it's so wide. Um, but yeah, so that's what the tool end looks like mounted on here. Everything's ready to go. Uh, don't forget this Delta's actually got nine arms on it, which is a bit different than what, what you normally see. Check out some old videos if you want to see more about that. So here we are on the top side. And uh, I basically just have that PTFE liner coming right out the top. Goes through a little bearing with a little bitty 3D printed support. Probably doesn't need to be a bearing, but I have them, so I might as well use them. And uh, that seems to work really, really well. Well, again, this is all kind of temporary for now, but uh, it works. So currently I've designed this where it's got like this little hook on the end of it. So what I usually do is I pull the wire down, bring it up, put it on that hook. And then as the printer is actually getting started, I can just hold on to this and, uh, you know, then allow it to get started, and then it's all happy donkey dory as it's running. It holds it basically right in the middle. So that works really well. And, uh, yeah, so far that's version one of the tool in. This is actually technically version three, I guess, because I've all set the center roller to test uh, exactly where that pivot point should be for doing uh, sharp corners and uh, tight geometry and stuff like that. So that's an overview of uh, basically what I've done here. I still have the uh, rollers up here and they're still on the bearings. That seems to work pretty well and I have not made any sort of tensioning system or anything like that. So far this seems to be uh, just exactly what I need, especially with this small wire. Now if I had a 10 pound spool on there, it'd be a different story. So for now I've just got some small spools and uh, up to about a pound I haven't had a, an issue with because the roller actually comes down and pinches um, the paper uh, or the, the sticky surface. And uh, I've actually been using the vacuum bed just by itself without that frame that I had on here. This seems to work really well just like that with the vacuum attached. All right, well hopefully that was like at least somewhat interesting to you and you found it cool because it was kind of fun. I could put the springs inside the actual motor. So far I haven't had any issues with that because I only move it a tiny bit anyway just to give it a little extra pressure or a little less pressure. Works really well so far. <clears throat> One thing I do want to do eventually is put a smaller motor on there, but honestly, I don't think I'm gonna to need to. I think that one will be okay. The smaller I go, the less torque I get and problematic uh, things that I start having. So right now, this is an example of the result. All right, this is 40 AWG wire. And it's all, I mean, it's actually hard to even see that wire. There's the wire coming out the edge. Um, I'm actually going to be sending uh, sending this particular coil and a few others out to uh, a friend for some experiments. So I will uh, update you more on exactly what these coils are being used for in the near future, hopefully. And I can show you actually one of these being put to use for an application. Uh, but currently, you know, I'm doing circles. Alright, so this video is all about circles and kind of what I'm actually doing here and seeing how this is functioning and in order to really explain to you how I'm doing everything with the software I really need to make an entire video of just software how I did things what I edited a whole bunch of stuff um, and if you guys want to see that please let me know if you're completely not interested then let me know I'm probably gonna post it anyway but it's an extra video I have to make which I want to to show you what I had to do um, so just let me know down in the comments but uh, circles and spirals work really well the next thing I'm going to be trying is actually squares um, and then get into more complex geometry because in order to do this I have to really change the g-code a lot and uh, me and my friend Matt have been kind of building um, well he actually primarily built the entire um, the g-code editor to make something such as this actually work but in order to do straight lines we have to do some funky business um, so I can do like straight lines and stops or I can do curves with smooth motion. Like those are my two options. Um, so to implement the whole system where I'm doing everything all at once is actually a little bit of a challenge, but that's where I'd like to get in the near future. So what I'd like to do is actually make a completely separate video of all the different coils that I've made so far with this system and show you it running a little bit more and some problems I have. This particular video really is just about the tool in here and how I got it set up. 
I did actually put a different uh, wheel on the end of there, a smaller bearing on the end of there. I haven't tried the rubber roller as of recording this right now because the solid metal works really well. I figured out if you keep tension on the wire on the back side, then the wire follows down the uh, wheel really well all the way to the point where it's being pulled off, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I've tried wire all the way up to somewhere around 50 AWG, so I'll talk about those in the next video. Some super impressive stuff, let me tell you. I, I am impressed that the machine can even do it, because I'm actually laying wire 35 microns apart from each other, which is like mind-boggling. Alright, well thanks for watching, God bless, read the Bible more, and I'll see you in the next one we talk about more about these coils. This is a gorgeous looking thing. This is actually a paperback um, label, and I put a p clear piece of uh, label, printable label on the front. You can actually still see the holes where the, uh, the vacuum table is. It's impressive because it actually pushes through. So, anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.
And that's how that's done. In one take. Pretty freaking sweet. If I ever did say so myself. For that kind of speed, it laid out really nicely. I can't complain. That is awesome sauce. God bless. See you guys later. Bye-bye.